you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. But the end is not yet. There will be great signs in the heavens and on the earth, and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them by that which is coming. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? World in Focus. Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening for World in Focus. We're going to be looking at a, a video that I did uh, way back in 2001 or maybe the, the, like, just around 2000. It's because we got news this week that uh, the singer of that particular band that we're going to be looking at um, passed away. He, he can only be a young man because he was uh, probably just around about 20 years of age when he first came to uh, see me uh, with his fellow uh, workers. Uh, they got involved in the ministry, but they were gangsters before they came to know Christ or and get really into the gospel and really have a, a sea change in their life. And it was just an amazing interview that uh, suddenly I got a phone call and uh, you've got to interview these guys that come all the way up from L.A. They belong to um, two gangs, the Crips and the Bloods. Now, that might not mean a lot to you or I, uh, but maybe to the young ones, because when I went home and told my boys that I'd just done an interview with some ex Crips and Bloods, they said, oh, Dad, you they the most notorious gangs in L.A. And they were indeed, and they were up to no good. But when Christ got hold of them, so to speak, or when they came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, they really uh, turned their life around. I want to show you part of this uh, interview. I've chopped it up a bit. It's uh, only about 20 minutes long, so bear with me, because it is quite interesting, because we need to know how to reach young people with the gospel of Jesus Christ in a way that's palatable to them, because we, we get a bit old and fuddy-duddy. I don't know about you, but I, I am both of those. And I would like to say that, you know, we need to reach the young. There's never been a better time than right now because we're living in a, a changed world that uh, the young people are going to have to pick up the bits and pieces of this broken system. And uh, they're the ones that are going to be paying uh, for it for a very long time, including our, uh, if you like, income that's going to come through some sort of state pension. Can't be up to much, I don't think, but whatever it is, they're really going to be lumbered with all the debts as well that are being uh, accrued right now. So have a look at this, and uh, I'd like you to join me again the other side of this. Uh, my wife will be taking up your emails and comments and things, but just think of ways in which uh, we could be innovative and think of ways that we could reach young people because it is it is our responsibility, is it not? And Christ said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. And if you like, young people in that sense are the, the lambs that I believe Jesus was talking about. And if we get into something really deep, I don't have a special guest tonight. I was just looking in the book of Daniel and it talks about the weeks of years. If anybody uh, is into that, I'll go home because I, but really seriously, looking at it is an amazing uh, prophecy of knowing how to interpret those particular weeks of years, which um, was from the time of the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem a time around the time of Ezra when they spoke about it uh, and this was about 458 years BC and it also went to took us all the way to the time of Christ and when the Messiah would come this was all prophesied how could this possibly be unless it was a God uh, that we serve that we know as Yahweh let me uh, just say have a look at this video Keep an open mind. It's, I know it's coming from young people, 
but they are quite uh, deeply affect were quite deeply affected then some 21 years ago and uh, very sad that Mr. Solo uh, had uh, passed away these last few days I don't know all the details I've tried to find out a bit more haven't been able to do that but he is the one that was the main speaker in this particular group gospel gangsters taken uh, from an interview around 2000 or 2001 stay tuned you're watching Revelation, the program with a biblical perspective. Now is the time for Revelation. Neglected. Okay, you're watching Revelation. Thank you very much for joining the program. Today, very unusual. We have uh, some rappers. No, not the sort of rappers that go on about end times and Bible subjects that perhaps go over your head, but tonight, Gospel Gangsters. My goodness, what a title. What's so, up? What's how are you doing? doing? Would you like to take the lead and just tell us a little bit about the band? We are the original Gospel Gangsters. And first, I'll start with the name. We're ex ex-crips and bloods and ex-drug dealers, ex-gang members, that lives have been changed by the, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. So, and you, God put us together and, and with the gifts that he put in our lives, you know, it's like gospel gangsters is pretty much a, a byproduct of our brotherhood, our friendship, our relationship with Christ. We're brothers in the Lord first, you know, so um, we just use our gifts that he gave us to give glory to him. We just give it back to him and we just, instead of telling people about ourselves and our neighborhood and, and things we used to talk about, because now I was rapping even before I knew the Lord, because the gift comes without repentance. So I had this gift, just didn't know the purpose for it. And where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. So I rapped about things I knew out of the abundance of my heart, my mouth spoke. But when my mind changed, my song changed and Jesus is in my heart, so that's what I speak. That's quite a testimony. I didn't realize that was going to come forth, and that's really good because we've not met, be met before, so whatever we're hearing now is, is hitting me as well as it, hopefully the audience. And I uh, thank you for that. Chili Baby, is this the same sort of background that you come from too? Yeah, we was, um, me and Solo, we grew up in the same neighborhood. We gang banged together. We sold dope together, you know. And um, he got born again first, and I was still out in the streets. You know, and he used to come pick me up in my dope spot and drive me around the corner. Minister to me and say, now you ready to go to church with me? And I say, nah, homie, that's for you. It's not for me. I want, I'm going to remain a gangster because I felt that's what I was born to be that. That's what I felt, you know. And then God, he put me in a place where my back was against the wall. And you know what I'm saying? I had to call on him, but it came through him because little did I know all the times he was picking me up and dropping me off, seeds was getting sown into my life. A lot of people think... You know, just because they born again, everything all right, but it don't go like that. You can't just sit in your pew in your church and not do nothing. It's people that's that's blind, that's lost out there. And if it wasn't for, for Christ through him, I wouldn't be here today. A lot of times, the only Christ people going to see is us. Because a lot of kids don't want to go to church, or teenagers, or grown-ups don't want to go to church. You know, they don't want to leave the club and come to the church, so you got to take the church to the club. And so he, he, brought, he brought church to me. He brought, you know, Jesus to me. The only thing, only, I didn't go to church. I never wanted to go. I was unchurched, period. But he was like, you know what I'm saying? I was a Gentile. You know what I'm saying? Some might say a Philistine. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, Philistine. Yeah, I was doing all them things. All the bad, <laughs> all the wrong thing. It was, I was that. You know what I mean? Until Christ changed my mind. And now I'm free. Totally free. Well, this gives a lot of people hope. I mean, there are people watching that would just say, well, you know, I'm past redemption. I, there's no way God would ever forgive me for the things I've done. And yet, it, just the two of you, we haven't even got to, to Ash. You know, what on earth is, can you say to people, to give them that hope that no matter what you've done, there is a way out. Well, sin abound, grace much more abound. That's what I tell them. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to give them the word that came to us, you know, and the word that's there and equally available to them. Um, no matter what they're going through, no matter where they're at, he's able. I mean, 
His name is Yahweh, he who brings into existence all that exists. I will be all that I will to be. You need deliverance, I can be that. You need healing, I can be that. You need a savior, I am that. Whatever you need, I'll be that. You mentioned uh, the Old Testament name for God there, Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, with no consonants, vowels. Please believe it. It is the uh, most incredible name, and yet uh, mentioned some 7,000 times in the, the scriptures and has been taken out of modern Bibles. Exactly. What do you think that is? Why? Uh -huh. Well, operate. That's a serious question. That's I'm operate, here for serious. That, that's that's, almost, mystery that's mystery. almost another show. Mm -hmm. That's the operation of the mystery of iniquity, to distort the truth. He said this was his eternal name used throughout all generations. In Acts 4, they forbid. You got to realize they forbid them to speak in the name of Yahshua. Actually, Jesus was in his name. It was Yahshua, meaning Yahweh is salvation. Who could save you from Yahweh? Nobody. He said he'd come in his father's name. But what was his father's name? Exactly. Yahweh. Yeah. And it says that his name will be made known all over the earth. And his children shall know his name. What is his name? Through all generations. Yahweh. <laughs> Amen. A lot of people yeah, say, in the name yeah. of the Lord. Well, right. what's his name? Right. Well, it's about time we got back to that, don't you think? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because then we can differentiate between the false gods of the Hallelujah. this world. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Well, we, we're, we're, we're rapping now, yeah? yeah? Hallelujah. Okay, even as old as I am, as gray and no hair, um, there's something up there. Ash. Ash Mac. Ash Mac. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. That's a long time since you did that. Um, but now, what is it that's brought you together with these gangsters? With the, I mean, these two right here on the streets, they was my enemies. You know, if I seen them on the streets before we came up under Christ, I'd be plotting on how to take their life. Because we didn't get along. Why is that? Were you the supplier? We were notorious, we were notorious enemies. For some, we don't even we don't even know why why, why we would hate them. But our allegiance is pledged to a, a gang. But then you pledge to a whole group of enemies. The enemies that were there before you even it's not your enemies. You get friends, but enemies. Is this not synonymous with the way the world is as well? Generally, we see that in different groups, and sadly, yeah, I mean, even in the Middle East. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, not just gangs. That's just a small picture where we live. But I mean, even like races. I mean, there's kids who's born. And don't know why they hate certain races, but their parents have put that on them. Right. They were born, and they're like, "Well, I don't know why, but my I hate I don't, them. Like I went to a school where um, it was like mixed, so that's why I thank God he, he had me where it was never a racial barrier or anything. There were Hispanics, Caucasians, Black kids, Asians, Sorry, uh, everything. So, Filipino. but 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 some of the uh, some of the, the the like say like Hispanic girls or something, they would like some of the the African-American kids, but their parents was like, no, that's no way. And they would like, I don't know why, but my dad will kill me. Mm -hmm. So they embraced it and they would be like, no. And they would say bad things and the other people had that spirit. They would call them bad names, like, oh, you love the, and they would make slanderous names. And and us being the minority, we were like, why don't they like? I mean, as kids, we, don't, we didn't understand. I mean, let's play. I mean, why can't we play? I mean, we've been playing every day. So these things are really put upon us by our forefathers, and this has come down generations and generations. Yeah. But really the bottom of it uh, lies a spiritual aspect. And there is an enemy. A lot of people watching maybe think, you know, if we talk about Satan, the devil, that, oh, he's, you know, for tooth fairies and stuff. It, it doesn't really exist. It's for, for movies. But uh, what's your opinion uh, on that? Oh, well, Satan is, is definitely real. It's, oh, and yeah. demons are definitely out here working every day if, if you just look at the world and how it's going how things is going on and happening and changing as the world turns you know that's that's i mean that's evident if somebody say that they just being unlogical i mean the, the word says i mean if we believe in yahweh then we must believe in our adversary there is an ad he warns you there is an adversary the devil and he comes to kill steal and destroy it, so i understand and we're and he said i I won't let you be ignorant of Satan's devices. So therefore, we, um, we continue to seek his face. And those who are led by the spirit of Elohim, these are the sons of Elohim. So we try to be led by the spirit, not by the flesh, that we can stay strong and we can stand against the adversary in that day. The reason I mention this is because uh, the adversary, Satan, has put about throughout the world now for the last 6,000 years um, a message of hatred, a message of dissension, 
and that which separates, because his whole intention is to lead everyone away from God, Yahweh, to to death and destruction. And what better way to do that through divisions? Mm. You know, it's only, I would say, this generation that's now seeing that those lies that they've been passed on from their forefathers, they don't, it's, it's a lie, because you, you're living proof, we're all living proof for those that come to know the Lord, that we can overcome any prejudices which have been put upon us. And I thank God for that. T tell me, I, I just, you know, I'm absolutely amazed uh, that of your testimony, and I'd really like to home in a little bit more. What would you, how did you overcome your hatred? Just to put it into a... Well, I, met, I, met, I met Mr. Solo over here, you know. I met him through a mutual friend. I, you know, I went to the studio, strictly on music business, you know, no personal ties. That means our preference, our gang preference is not here. This is music. This is business. I went in there, you know, to see how the studio was ran, to see what was going on, basically. And instead of showing me how to get, make a, get a record deal, he showed me the face of my creator. And once I seen it, I never wanted to stop looking at it. And, I, and, I, and, and my heart, I start, when I renewed my mind, I started to change in every way. I didn't I even desire right. for the things that I did before. Now, you guys, obviously, as soon as I met you, you would think, my goodness, if anyone was to meet you in the street, they would think, wow, real cool. Cool. You don't mess with these guys, you know. So how is it that you have s softened yet still maintained your toughness? Let me because I get that. Can I get that? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get a beef. See too. the We're reason that it. is. See, let me take my hat off. See, I'm a lion from the tribe of Judah. See, a lion is the king of the jungle. Not everything sees a, the deer see the lion like, oh, the lion, he can kill me. But then the lion come give him a little fool. Hey, here you go. Yahweh bless you. He could have killed me, but he showed me love. I'm a lion. Nothing, can, nothing eats a lion. Only thing, a, any, only thing you can do is kill me. Like, if, if us two lions butt, only thing we can do is kill each other. But you, you don't run. You don't destroy me. No. You don't prey on me. We're predators. But we choose to praise. So people walk in and they see like, oh, we could, we could physically go toe-to-toe -to -toe with whoever from I mean I got best my spiritual dad played for the Washington Redskins Super Bowl he's a solid man but we look eye to eye physically I'm a lion too respect me and I'm gonna respect you but we choose to praise and when they see us big men walking in but we just come with the love of Elohim because God is love and he's inside of us and they see like we got rap even our gifts people see like you guys rap so good you guys could be making money or you guys are handsome, you can have so many women. But it's not about that. It's about him and his purpose and plan for our lives. Knowing him, as you call him, what has it done to actually make other changes in your life? What are, what's the evidence? Well, when you know Yahweh, you know everything. I mean, then you understand your purpose and plan for your life. I mean, without a vision, people perish. <laughs> so. We was paired without lack of knowledge. People perish. And he said, you shall know the truth, and the truth you know shall make you free. See, I was bound because I knew nothing in ignorance. But as I begin to know, I begin to get set free as I begin to know my creator more. And he taught me about, he, he, he has something to do with everything. Everything exists he made. So then it resurrect my entrepreneur mind because he gave me the ability to obtain wealth. He said, I give you witty inventions and ideas. He began to establish the thoughts of the righteous. Now I don't think of killing. Now his word, I'm reprogramming. I'm being transformed by the renewing of my mind through the reading of the word. Letting the same mind be in me that was in Yahshua, the Messiah. That's, and, what, that's what I wanted to hear. He the transforming of the mind. That's what we all need to do. It's not a matter of just knowledge, is it? It's no. a matter of making changes. You know, is repentance going Turn. forward, turning around. You know, now, young people that were could be watching this program, this is for the older people like my generation, but you can still speak volumes to people through what changes you've made. Uh, Chili Baby, what, what would you say is the most significant change um, walking with the Lord has, has done for your life? <laughs> Where do you want to start at? I mean, my whole, my whole, man, my whole, my, once I realized my whole existence was Him, I had to walk with Him. Listen to what he say, not to what myself say or to what the devil say. I had to walk in this because he going to change you. He gonna, I never seen a man come to Elohim and stay the same. You know, people say, well, you, you do this and you do that. You can't come. To, I can't come to church because I do that. 
I'm not going to tell you to stop that. He didn't tell me, okay, chill, stop this, chili baby, stop this. He just said, come worship me. Give your heart to me. Give your mind. Give everything to me. And I'm going to change it all. And I'm going to fashion you. And I'm going to shape you how I want you to be. So you can walk in the earth and be a lion from the tribe of Judah. Fantastic. You feel me? I do. Okay. Right, That's uh, Ashmack. Yeah, I mean, there must be something when you listen to, to your colleagues as well that, that it reminds you of what, you know, gave you the impetus to, to walk in faith. I mean, I'm reminded every day. I mean, because it's not something that we just go on the road and, and act about. You know, we get back to the hotel room, we write in the word. You know, we worship him for no reason at all because he is worthy of all the praise. You know, so it's not, I'm not just talking, I'm walking. So I'm reminded every second and every hour of every day. So it's never, it's never hard to forget. I mean, like he said, every time you take a breath, every time your eyes blink, who causes your heart to beat? Who causes it to stop? Who causes your hair to grow? Right. See, once you realize you're not yourself, you're, you're his. He made you. Once you die, you go right back to the dirt and your spirit lives on with him. So, you know, that's why he says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, because you're going to return back to your creator. When you, when you get in trouble, you call on him. Just like a car, when it's broke, you got a manual. You got to go to that manual to fix that car. He made you. You got to go back to him to get fixed up. That's why he said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. No matter who you are, it's going to go down. Bottom line, line bottom. The manual. What's the manual? The Bible, isn't it? The basic instructions before, before leaving, leaving earth. earth. Yeah. Don't yeah. leave earth without him. Don't. I, I, I pity your soul. Mm -hmm. What we need in our generation is to encourage particularly younger people because they're bombarded in the media with so much which is um, salacious, uh, untruth. Um, you talked about belief in a creator. We're given this science, uh, the philosophy of evolution and the damage that's done to our generation so they don't even accept that there can be a god or a creator. To get to the appreciative level that you guys have got, um, what would you say to young people watching today to encourage them? I would, I would tell them, um, you tried everything else. I already know that it won't satisfy you because there's a void in your heart that only he could fill because he reserved that spot for him because eternity is in the hearts of man. Yeah. The mere fact that you're breathing, brother, is a testimony that he lives because he said when he breathed into Adam, he became a living soul. So the mere that you breathe and it's not on, you can't stop yourself from breathing. You can't do it. It's him inside you. It's Elohim inside you. And I would tell him just to begin to see. You tried everything else. You tried women. You tried drugs. You tried the gang. Try Yahshua. Try your God. Try your creator. Try. And I guarantee you he'll answer. He said, taste and see that I'm good. That's all I... I was, I'm, this isn't a fake. I, if you would have met me 10 years ago, you probably wouldn't have met me because we would have been on two different sides. And if we did meet, it wouldn't, it would have been on whole other terms. But old things are passed away. Everything is new. You know, I'm a new creature. We, I mean, we're engrafted in the same family. You call him daddy, I do. So that makes you my brother. Amen. We all are related because we all from one seed Adam. If you believe that word, if you believe our creator. We're all brothers and sisters come from one seed. And that's why it's impossible for me to hate. In, in this faith, once you believe, if you thoroughly believe, you can't hate me or you because you know my social position, whether I have no money, that doesn't matter here. My educational status means nothing. You could be Michael Jordan or the president. All of us got to buy. We're all tied in. Whether he, well, no matter your racial status, it doesn't matter. But whether one has Christ and he's equally available to all, Colossians 3.11, if you need some word for it. You know, I just say, you know, uh, like me, I, you know, call this bluff and he'll pull your cord. You feel me? You call, you say you want to, you know, you want to be changed, you can be changed. Call him. He there for you. He made you. He can fashion you and change you to however he wants you to be. Call this bluff and he'll pull your cord. And you'll never know, you'll never know yourself until you know the creator. I don't care who you are. See, man. I don't care who you tough, how tough you are, how much money you got, it doesn't matter. Until you get close to the creator, you'll never know who you are because you'll always have a void in your heart. It, it'll always be that empty, empty space, you know what I'm saying, that you're trying to fill. And you can't fill it because it's him. And he's just waiting on you to say yes, that's it. Just say yes, Lord. Have you ever been tempted to go back to the old life? In our younger walk, in our, in our younger walk, but now, I mean... 
I'm like the disciples. Where can I go, Lord? Okay, I ain't got no money. I got you. I still have everything. You know, if I don't got no ice, when before anything he has, he is. You know what I mean? So long as I got you, I, I got everything. 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 You could take away all my possession, but the name it stays. It stays. It don't matter. Nothing. Nothing. If I die, so what? You got a gun to, to You can't do nothing. He don't let you do. And to be absent of this body is to be present with Yahweh. So you do me. Actually, I'm here for you, because you kill me. I'm, I'm where you hoping to be. I've made it now. It's over for me. I'm there. So. Death wears this sting. It don't bother me. Because I know as soon as I check out, I check in, and I really live. <laughs> can, That's these, only death. can these dry bones live? I'd like very much to hear you sing. Now, is that, is that possible that you could uh, just give us a rap? Oh, you want to snip it? Yes. We're going to be playing the video, obviously, in the program, which they're going to send very kindly from the States uh, in... Uh, Digital beta cam, if possible, but if not, better SP. <laughs> but we'll uh, we'll look forward to playing that on the air. And uh, but meanwhile, just just give us, you know, what have you got? Something for this generation? Amazing Grace, or yeah, hey, hey, hey. This is how it goes down. This is how it's translated. Amazing Grace to me is the sweet sound to catch a wretch like me. So let the beat pound. See, I was lost till the cross. Now I'm found. I once was blind, but I, I can, can see now. now. And it will amaze you, the unmeritable favor that he gave you, the Savior. And I just want to take time to praise you, because even while still lost in sin and still doing wrong, his grace kept me from a tombstone, born in sin and shaping in iniquity, full of trickery. <laughs> Why did you want to get with me? I never would pray. I'd rather give the girl and lay, full of sin. Like I said, I was born, born that way. A foul mouth full of four-letter verbs and nouns. If sin was water, I was in so deep I, I drowned. And even though I thought clubbing was fun and church was dumb, dumb he kept bidding me to come, come son. son. His spirit drew me to repentance and I thought of Christ. I was a sinner when you died. Your blood bought, bought my life. life. Now all my sins are erased. But it's not because of me. It's because of your grace. grace. It's just so, so amazing. amazing. So amazing. Can't beat that. Can't beat Hallelujah. that. Amazing grace for all of us. And by the grace of God, go I. A solo, a baby, punch. Yo, 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 what's the deal? Thank you very much for joining us this time. I hope you really enjoyed that and look forward to the next program. Who knows? God knows who we'll have next. Thank you. You've been watching Revelation, the program with a biblical perspective. Welcome back to our live Monday Night World in Focus. Um, the interview that you just saw, uh, it was Solo, which was to the left of your screen. It was doing most of the talking uh, who has passed away in the last few days. Um, we're trying to get some more information, but Leslie has joined me uh, now, Leslie. And uh, what, what sort of uh, information is out there with regards to Solo's passing? Unexpected death, no, no details whatsoever. I can't find any details. But right up until the present, uh, they still recording music and um, apparently for, just recently they were in a recording studio all of them so and was that in LA yes mm -hmm. yes yes so um, I really don't know but just to say that they are they were up until maybe last week or so still performing as a band as a rap band wow. mm -hmm. So sad, so yeah. tragic. You know, when young life goes, I say young, he's probably in his 50s now. Be, well, yeah. Because how long ago was it? 2001. Yeah, well, that's, that's 20 years ago, ago yeah. yeah. So mm. he could be at least in his 40s, you know? Yeah, definitely. Mm. What uh, in, other information? Have you got anything? Uh, no, there isn't any, else? No? There's nothing. I've scoured yeah. the internet. No, absolutely. Um, I don't have any information. I've got some emails and texts that have come in, though, regarding right. our young people. Joan says, good evening. I think that when our young people do come to the Lord, they will be stronger than us. My daughter is practicing new age and works on the front line, and I haven't heard from her in almost six years. Oh, and she works on the front line. I live by myself, and I believe this is a spiritual battle. Mm. It's very difficult, but I know the Lord will work it out. God bless you both, says Joan. Mm. Bless you, Joan. 
Yeah, you've got to hold out hope, haven't you? You've got to pray for our young ones because they do get drawn away into the world, you know? Absolutely. And, uh, that system is there to really annihilate them eventually. As it was when we were young. Yeah, it was, yeah. How, mm. how on earth can we survive uh, without God's grace and uh, people around us? You've got to put people around you that are wise and also can lead you into uh, God's truth, and that's in the scriptures as well. There's nothing more powerful. I was just thinking, uh, there was Chili Baby, who was in the middle of those two, and, there and was Ash. Ash. Yes. Yeah. Now, Chili Baby's put out there uh, a really nice message, wasn't it? Something yeah, like... Yeah, just saying, you know, my brother, my best friend, we've been together since we were so young, I can't believe you're gone, and uh, it's, um, yeah, so uh, I just don't have the details. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me a little, a little bit about the way in which, remember when Scott Fitzgerald, or Fitzgerald Scott, was a young boy, Someone 19. Someone who worked with you in the studio, yeah. yes, yeah. He was uh, somebody we had in Tampa in the studios that had run out of money to do his demos, and uh, we decided we were going to help him uh, without charging him because he'd just get a, a leg up into the industry. And it was a long shot, really, but he was very talented. Remind me of Solo there. And he eventually ended up selling 35 million records. He did. Got in touch with us about 10 years ago, said it was really, he's going to come over because uh, he was doing so well. He's going to come over from America and come to Spain with us as well. Mm. And then he, he too just dropped just dead. Died, didn't he? 49. Yeah. He was mm. to no age, you know? Yeah, just... yeah. He had um, an unknown heart defect and uh, he, he just died, although he'd never been ill in his life. Yeah. Mm. I remember when he was in touch with us, he said, uh, it was either an email or the phone call, he said, you know what? He mm. said, um, I'm all prayed up, because he wasn't so into uh, the Lord when he was in the studio with us uh, back in 1989, 88, 89. Yeah. yeah. But because his family uh, were obviously churchgoers, his dad was a preacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously, you always come, you come back, you see. And it was really nice to hear from him at that time, you know, just before he died. So, you know, I'm coming back. I'm, I'm all yeah. prayed up, he said. Absolutely. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Okay, let me read out some more emails, but let me ask you some questions. Did you watch um, Boris Johnson at 7 p.m. this evening? And uh, did you hear what he announced? That schools, um, some of the children are definitely going back on the 1st of June. And then the following week, um, the motor car showrooms will open and the open air markets. And on the 15th of June, the shops will open. All of the retail stores will open. How do you feel? about all of this. I mean, it's, I mean, we're sort of supposed to be easing out of lockdown. Are you absolutely raring to go? I mean, I love to go shopping. Lorna and I really enjoy to go shopping together. We can spend five hours and buy one item in five <laughs> Between hours. You. We just like to yeah. check out every single store. But I know, but the thing is... But, must... but I, don't have, I don't have any desire after all of this time to start going shopping. I've kind of just lost that desire. I don't know when the restaurants will open. We've just got so used to cooking our own food at home, cooking from scratch. I don't have any desire to go into a restaurant. It's really strange. There's been a lot of changes. Do you think there might be some fear uh, in there that people just don't want to get caught up uh, and be able to, you know, just stay safe, even though they will keep a distance? Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a while to get people's yeah. confidence back in, in that they can go into a restaurant or go into a shop or whatever, yeah. you know? So and during um, lockdown, I mean, it was forced upon us. We didn't have any choice. But do you feel that for yourself that some good has come out of it and do let us know what is the positive side of lockdown for you it'll be uh, very very interesting people at the beginning were distraught that they weren't able to go to church of course because church isn't just for um listening and hearing the word of god it's for the fellowship and then people are saying oh i'm on all these zoom church groups and such things and i'm going to five or six services on a sunday not just one service and such things but uh, i think people a lot of people are readjusting their priorities is that you do let us know let us know what changes you think you may make once lockdown yes. is over and if you're self-employed you've got a sore you've got a small business how are you going to um, manage um, maneuver your way 
back into hopefully a profitable situation. Uh, do you have um, concerns about uh, how you're going to do that or you, have you got a plan? And uh, just share, you know, perhaps a testimony or two about what has happened through this lockdown period uh, between you, your wife, your children, and also, as I say, uh, going back to work. How do you feel about that and what's your hope for the future? Mm -hmm. Nice to hear from you live at revelationtv.com. In the meantime, I've got one here. It says, um, how David Wilkerson reached the gangs in America simply by mm -hmm. speaking God's word, which is sharper than a two-edged sword. The Holy Spirit opens people's eyes, so no need to search for new ways to reach young people. The Holy Spirit reaches people. Oh, and do you know anything about the three men's lives since the interview? So hopefully you did hear us chatting just then. Okay. <clears throat> Life transforming testimony from the gospel gangsters. May Mr. Solo's soul rest in peace, mm. says Sister Chimmy or Chimey. So, and uh, wonderful testimony. Thank you for it. Got one here. Everyone keeps saying today's youngsters have it hard. They're going to have to pay for our pensions, etc. Everyone has forgotten that par parents, yours and my generation, had a world war to pay for. We were still paying the Americans into the 90s. Mm -hmm. We also had to pay for the new NHS, the new Social Security, giving people pensions and health care who hadn't even paid into the system. Plus, we were paying for our own health care and pensions. So I think I've earned my pension, says Norma. I certainly think that uh, you've earned your pension and all of those. The thing with pensions, uh, pensions, like, for, yeah. for example, state pensions, is mm. that uh, the generation that has been paying it, uh, that hasn't, the, the government hasn't been saving it somewhere for us. Uh, they've been spending it. So it's just they're uh, expecting, obviously, uh, the next generation always to be the one paying for the one that's just leaving or gone behind uh, and have retired. Mm -hmm. So it does fall on the younger people to actually uh, make things work enough to be able to provide for a pension for those who are uh, retiring as of now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the way the system works. Cynthia says, I loved Bible study tonight, plus the repetition bit. And that's because uh, our Bible study team sympathetically had to explain to you that they're not live due to the COVID-19. They're not able to travel. They travel from long distances to come to the studio and they uh, record their Bible studies in batches, sort of uh, a few a day over several days and they stay in the area. And that just has not been able to happen. So uh, they're actually repeating. And uh, it's one of the casualties at Revelation TV. But uh, we said, well, it would be great. I mean, the series, that we're, the Bible study that we're doing at the moment is from 2016. So even if people had followed along, it might be that uh, you're having a little refresher course. And that's what Cynthia's doing. She says, yes, Leslie, I'm not bothered, bothered one bit about shopping. I'm quite happy to shop at my village shop. There's pr their prices may be a bit more, but they really have stepped up to delivering to us, the elderly. So um, I've knocked the supermarkets on the head. Yeah. Yeah, so we go back to your local traders, uh, oh, yeah. which is really good. And, exactly. You know, and it's also more friendly. Do, yeah. When you go in stores, big stores, does anybody really say hello to you? I mean, and mean it or say, recognise you? Because <laughs> no. you're just one in a million going yeah. in and out there. Whereas your local trader, you mm. know them and they were always part of, uh, of the extended family, if you like, especially oh. out in the rural areas. They probably still are. One of the local florists in our area had to close and so they came up with the idea that they would um, deliver to our doors fruit and veg and uh, through my daughter-in-law I heard about it and I signed up for it. So every Tuesday morning a box of fruit and veg and a dozen and a half eggs arrives on my doorstep and um, I saw the girl last week as she delivered it and I said oh thank you it's so so great to get this every week. And she said, I really hope that after the lockdown, you'll continue to support us. Oh, right. Thought, yes, why not? Yes. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll be in Spain, though. But I thought it's, she's made a point that they've mm. gone all out, haven't they? Yes. To help us during this time. And then what's going to happen after lockdown? Mm. Are we going to go back That's to the, our old yeah. ways or remember these people? 
who uh, made huge efforts. I quite like getting my box of fruit and veg. Oh, our box of fruit and veg, not just mine. Yes. And um, <laughs> because it's different it's so every week. You don't choose what goes in it. And so it's a surprise. Oh, so is, is it? It's a box like this. Now, once upon a time, we wouldn't put up with that. We'd be saying, no, we want this, this, this and this. <laughs> Do you think our demanding voice is something that we've curtailed and we've calmed down a we've bit? Got use. I'm working on it. We've got... Oh, good. <laughs> We've got used to getting what we're given. And uh, the joy at this box of fresh fruit and veg is absolutely great. And then you get creative. What can I cook with what I've got? Three coconuts and <laughs> a mango. <laughs> oh, dear. OK. Uh, Judith, good evening. She says, that has to be the best interview I've ever seen on Revelation oh, TV. Oh, really? Oh, my I'm goodness. I'm rushing this as good. I want you to know wow. how I feel. It reminded me of Nikki Cruz and reading the book, Run, Baby, Run. I saw Nikki Cruz in Halifax and I was so impressed. Many church people would not be able to understand these young people. That is a mm. big problem. I must stop now, but I could say more. Oh, oh that, that's, that's really nice. That's encouraging for me to know because I, I pondered mm. and thought, you know, if I show this, I don't mm. know whether it's going to go down very well. Mm. Because mm -hmm. we, we managed to find this on YouTube. I mean, we've lost the tapes, or we, we don't know where they are. regularly yeah. in days gone by, but yeah, it kind of things disappear off of our system. God used to bring some people to me that I never knew. I didn't even know how to contact them. They just would come out of the woodwork. Mm -hmm. And uh, they showed up at the studio, and so their agent or somebody had told them, you get yourself on Revelation. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, it was a program then, it wasn't a TV channel. And, uh, you know, and, and I was amazed when I heard the testimony. I said, as you probably heard, I said, this is speaking to me. I loved it. I came alive during that interview. It really was so, so inspiring. OK, I've got one here from Mrs Anonymous, or Mr Anonymous, who says, could it be fake news? If you wanted to change the world, you would need to stop it, to turn it just like culture change in a company. People believe what they are told. People die every day of something. Could it be a propaganda plan, planned attack on liberty to bring in security measures that we wouldn't have stood for in a free world without such as COVID-19? Maybe no conspiracy here. And there's so many people with so many mm. different views. It does make you think. Uh, and does. you could actually say, well, there's this possibility, everything's mm. possible. Yeah. Um, but is it likely that it's probable? Um, mm. We don't know. But uh... I was chatting to Anne Dawson last night and uh, present Speaker's Corner. Well, not during the COVID-19, she doesn't, because she doesn't travel in to do that. But uh, hopefully she will be back on the screen soon. And we were chatting and I said to her, I said, who would you have thought, who would have thought that overnight we would so willingly have stopped using cash? Mm. Just overnight. The shops are saying, you know, they don't want to, the cashiers don't want to be anywhere near us. They put the little um, card machine away from them. We just tap it. They've raised the limit to £45 so we can tap oh, really? any purchase. Yeah, up to £45 mm. from £30 now. And, and we're willingly doing that so that we don't have to hand them notes and have that contact with them and they hand things back to us. And so overnight, we very happily embraced cashless yeah. society. Yeah. Look how subtle that is. Yeah. I mean, for people who are not used to listening to perhaps uh, channels like us, uh, the Bible is full of uh, predictions about the sort of things that would happen mm -hmm. at a particular generation. Um, th this was talking from the time of Christ. There was lots of uh, interpretations by even great men uh, like Sir Isaac Newton as to about the time period and uh, that Christ could possibly return and this was uh, looking at 21st or mid 21st century we're in that time period now and all sorts of things have been going wrong so when we talk about these things there is a reference uh, to the scriptures they're not just totally wacky off the wall but some people might think they are but what planet are we on planet earth at the moment <laughs> okay I've got one here from Julie who says it's moving forward. The, the normality we had won't be the same. No. I, I think you're right. Mm. I really do. Just the way people are talking, uh, the way people are behaving, like even in and the... And changing their priorities as yes. well. Change and also perhaps going a little bit more discerning about what they want to do with their life. Sure. Do they want to work round the clock? Mm -hmm. 
you may tell me that. Where do they want to do the things that they were pursuing before? Have they not learned that really there's more to life than just that? Other yeah. things which people chase. Mm -hmm. Um, R.I.P. Rest in peace to Solo. I really enjoyed the interview. The way you reached out to those guys was amazing. Thanks, Julie, for that. What would you advise when someone cannot commit to Jesus as they feel they are a hypocrite or, um, or, the, or the day it's pointless as they know they will sin almost every day anyway? It's a very we good... Are, we are sinners. It says whilst we realize <coughs> Christ died for us and... Yes, mm. uh, exactly. But uh, in fact, some people, I remember somebody mm. quite close to me once said, um, uh, mm. I don't go to church because I'm not, I'm not perfect. I said, well, that's the reason we go to church. That's the reason you go, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> because it isn't full of people that are, are yeah. righteous. They might be a little bit self-righteous, but they're, yeah. they're not righteous except through the blood of Christ. But mm. we're all uh, learning. We're, um, it's almost mm. like we need a T-shirt under reconstruction. Mm -hmm. man under reconstruction, a woman. And so it's only through Christ that we can uh, be that new creature. In fact, uh, this was uh, something which Solo, I think, said. He's a new creature in Christ. So uh, again, reference to Paul's words, scripture. Okay, Victoria says, I now believe that God is everywhere, in our hearts, in our homes, and in our thoughts. You don't have to go on pilgrimages before you meet God. Churches, mosques, our buildings, our heart is church without walls. I've mm -hmm. learned so much watching Revelation TV. I saw the best of Howard and Gordon and Lorna and Leslie the way I never, ever did, <laughs> and all in a good way. Thank you very much, Revelation TV, says Victoria. Were we talking about a cut above the rest? <laughs> <laughs> cut his hair. I think that's what we what we might be talking about. Mm. It's really good. I mean, we really have enjoyed um, meeting with you via the screen every single day, and we've loved having your viewer videos. Do keep sending them to us because uh, it's really good for us to meet your faces and for you to be able to meet each other. Yeah. So, well, talking yeah. of this, can I just show the video that um, I started off with just putting some drums together. There's only 16 bars and uh, that's it really, but we managed to get uh, five of us involved. I started on the drums and I sent it out and uh, got three musicians from Spain to do their bit and um, two, uh, two of us from London. So I uh, we got that ready, we can play it. Yeah, let's have a look at it. I'll just call it jamming. It's only 30 seconds long, something like that. And uh, this is what we made of it. Yeah, that was a bit it of really fun. fun. It looks it really did, fun. It did, yeah. It was difficult because it was the mm. first time that we had to learn how to be able to interact with each other. Somebody mm. had to start. It was as easy to lay the drums down because mm. that then the the keyboard player Sam added his bit, mm. and then we had uh, um, William who put on the, the guitar, rhythm guitar, a bit of lead, and then there's Quincy on the sax and uh, Simone. Uh, the singer and so and in yeah. fact Simone is part of the She Matters team. She Matters oh, yeah. will be back with you in June and also for a couple of weeks uh, last week and this week in fact she's joining Dave Hodgson at 10 o'clock on a Thursday evening for The Late Show. Hmm. Oh really okay yeah yes, that's right because yeah. it was a new one last week. Absolutely. Yeah and just yeah. Uh, uh, give, tell her you've had a listen to tonight and just uh, <laughs> Let her you know, know. watch it in Revelation TV. Let her know. <laughs> Can I just quickly just talk about our um, finances? Yeah, well, right. yeah, how much you got in the bank? <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly. Um, as you know, we haven't been doing our Time for Revelation fundraising. We haven't been doing our Building Fund fundraising. That other channels have been um, big time. And But what I want people to know is just because we feel that it's insensitive to do that does not mean 
that we're so okay for money that uh, we, we don't need donations. It um, couldn't be further from the truth. And uh, last week our donations were very, very low. And I uh, just want to say to you that all the time that the donations are coming in, we will continue to broadcast. So please do remember us, even though we're not there in your faces once a month. And uh, you can donate by giving the office a ring between 9 and 5, or going online and making a donation, or sending a cheque. So uh, just thank you so much for your continued to su support, because we are a team, and we can't do what we do unless you do what you do. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Fantastic. We're using cash here in West Yorkshire, says Glenda. We're not using it at all here. It's all machines. Oh, and someone else says we've never stopped using cash. Do you know, I haven't used cash for weeks and weeks and weeks because... Uh, no, I've had the same amount hmm. of money in my pocket hmm. uh, for three months. Hmm. Let's see what there is. Probably nothing, knowing you. <laughs> no, hang on a sec. <laughs> A fiver. That's a fiver. <laughs> Usually so, I... The other day, I had um, some... That's all I've got. I had some groceries delivered. <laughs> um, not my fruit and veg box, but just sort of uh, groceries. It was through Deliveroo. And always with Deliveroo, I always give the guy a couple of pounds tip if, if I use them. We usually use them for takeaways, but we haven't been getting takeaways. And I said, oh, the co-op is doing delivery through Deliveroo. Great. And he rang on my doorbell put the carrier bags down. By the time I got there, he had run and he had gone and it's all to do with social distancing, that they will guarantee that you won't have any contact oh, with so them. so they won't get any tips. I know, exactly. I know, oh, and I'm goodness. sure they rely on their tips, but... But uh, if you did leave a tip, they'd have to touch it. What I should have done was left it outside the yeah, door. Yeah, I but didn't that, even think about yeah. that. I opened the door ready to see him, mm. he'd gone, so he'd they run. They don't earn a lot of money. Don't they don't, no. they don't. Yeah. OK. How long have we got? Two minutes. Ten years, maybe, at the most. Oh, no. I think it's a plan made to control us. A woman has said that the chip is ready to go and 5G will activate it. Just saying, says this person. <laughs> Absolutely. Lots of people are just saying <coughs> lots and lots of things. Just saying. Can you, tell me the like name of, can you tell me the name of the group you had on this evening? Gospel, Gospel gangsters. gangsters. And I think the way they spell gangsters is G-A-N-G... S-T-A-Z. Thank you. I'd like to see it again. We're in our 10th week of lockdown. I don't know what money is now. Exactly. That's exactly it. Um, Eden says, Hi, Revelation. I've just watched that interview with Howard. It was brilliant. My work is with young people, and they're the kinds of people who can reach them. They were so real and down to earth. Rest in peace to Solo. Mm. Very sad to hear. But think of the amount of youngsters he would have been able to reach in his lifetime. Thank you, Revelation yeah. TV. Oh, it makes me feel really good when I know that the, some of these old uh, interviews and things actually speak today to you because I often think, oh, well, they... anyway, it's really good to get that feedback and it gives me confidence. I'm going to, mm. when I go back to Spain, I'm going to go through uh, the, the, sh the shelves and see what other things I can find. Because I know, I, I think I had that one in Spain on the mm. shelf in the yep. garage, uh, in Rebecca's garage, our daughters. And uh, maybe there's others there as well. <laughs> OK, um, I really don't want to resume life exactly as it was, says Barbara. I've deepened my relationship with the Lord. Up till now, I've felt closest to him in sad situations. Not that this isn't such a time, but I've had more time for prayer, etc. Mm. And I'm not clock watching. People pleasing at times, to be honest. I initially actually like the fact that I had permission to go for a walk. How sad is that? There was nothing to stop me before, but I was always chasing my tail. It seemed like that, and I'm even retired. I'm determined to reevaluate my life and mm. use of time, including my church life. I do miss the fellowship at church as well as in general, and in particular, actual contact with family, including grandchildren, of course. Mm. Um, but I'm enjoying virtual church, both on my own and with others, and, of course, church without walls. I could go on and on and on, but you get the idea. Finally, I'm praying every day for our Prime Minister and his associates. Well done. All of them, terrifying responsibility, and mm. for a miracle in the shape of a vaccine or for this horrible thing to just shrivel up. 
Yes. Barbara. No, it's brilliant because, you know, that's one of the things that I haven't liked is that having a go at Dominic, Dominic Cummings. Uh, I mean, the Prime Minister needs all the help he can get and if he's got a bright spark in uh, Dominic, then he needs to keep him one way or the other. Even if he's made mistakes, we all make mistakes and we all need to be a little bit uh, sort of courteous and I think a bit forgiving, I think. Absolutely. In the last seconds, darling. I I haven't, I haven't got time to read any oh. emails. I'm so sorry, but Carl yeah. and I are certainly looking forward to seeing you tomorrow for our mornings. And Cyril will be back for the second half of our mornings. So, yeah. And thank you for tuning into World in Focus because we are here for you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.